Today we start a new series. We're going to call it Hydraulic Clutch 101. Everything you wanted to know about hydraulic clutches but didn't know who to ask. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. I've been selling hydraulic clutch kits for going on 20 years. I either designed or helped design every single bracket you see on this table. Also in that 20 years, I've dedicated myself to helping people with their car projects. Many of the tech articles on Days Cars show people how to make the very things that I am selling. Seems like a stupid business model. It'd be like going to a restaurant that prints the recipes on the menu. I don't really care. I'm not in it for the money. Don't get me wrong, I like making a little money, but I am just as happy helping people out. So with that in mind, I'm gonna put together this series of videos and go over basic concepts of designing, building, setting up a hydraulic clutch so that it helps people understand what they need to know if they're gonna put together their own kit and if they don't have the time, the welding experience, the design experience, any of those things, they want to buy a kit from me, no problem. So what am I offering? Well, I have three kits here that are for a T5 transmission. That's this guy right here. It mounts to the side of the T5 transmission in the tabs that are cast into the case. I have this guy right here, which is for a 94 and up T5 transmission because the clutch fork no longer lines up with the side tabs on said T5. I offer this guy right here, which is a broken tab or G-Force type T5 transmission mount. And then I offer this bracket right here, which does triple duty. It's good for the 35 50 series of transmissions, the TKO series of transmissions, and the new TKX that Tremec came out with a little over a year ago. As I said, this one mounts to the side tabs on a T5, and all of these are what I call a flush mount. So to mount up any of these brackets, what you end up doing is removing the mounting bolts for the transmission on the clutch fork side, and then you place this up where those mounting bolts go and then use a longer bolt. So basically you're sandwiching the transmission mounting tabs between any of these three and the bell housing. Now, when I first designed these kits, I only offered two slave cylinders. This guy right here, which works in all three of these brackets, and this guy right here. And both of those are a 7 8 inch bore slave cylinder. The common conventional wisdom on the internet is if you're using a 7 8 bore slave cylinder, you need a 7 8 bore master cylinder. And sadly, like so much information on the internet, that is a myth. A 7 8 inch bore master cylinder will likely work with either of these slave cylinders. But a 3 quarter inch bore or a 13 16 inch bore will also likely work. And the advantage of going with a smaller bore master cylinder, if it has sufficient fluid volume, we'll come back to that, is reduced pedal effort. So you really have to calculate and figure out the fluid volume of your master cylinder. And then you want to get the smallest master cylinder that will still accommodate the desired fluid volume of your slave cylinder. That was a mouthful. All right. If you're ordering one of my kits and you order one of my master cylinders, they're 13 sixteenths. They have 1.25 inches of stroke. That's going to result in around an inch of stroke here and around an inch of stroke here, which is what you need to actuate the transmissions that I have mentioned. But what if you're not using my master cylinder? What if you're using a master cylinder that is already in your Ford Ranger, or you're using a master cylinder that's in a Miata or something else? Well, then this may or may not work, and we have to do some math. 
I know math for many of you is a four letter word, but we have to use it to know if your master cylinder has enough fluid volume to actuate either of these slaves. I designed all these kits for the Ford Mustang. That's the test platform that I was working with. That's the market my products were originally geared to, but it has expanded and been used for all kinds of things. Guys are putting T5s in BMWs, Miatas, Austin Healey's, Triumphs. I mean, I've, I've talked to tons of people. They go in all kinds of things. And because people are using their OEM master cylinder, I had to do some homework and find a smaller bore slave cylinder. So this is a three quarter inch bore slave cylinder that replaces this, fits on that bracket. You can see I've added slotted holes to later production T5 brackets just for that purpose because the bolt pattern here is narrower than the bolt pattern here. So now we have both options. We have the three quarter inch and we have the seven eighths. And the same is true of these flush mount. This one is seven eighths and this one is three quarter. Now, sadly, this one costs me quite a bit more than this one does. So if a person wants to use this slave cylinder, the price of the kit is gonna go up. In the case of these two, it's just a direct swap. This is normally what comes in the kit. They say, hey, I need a three quarter inch slave. I swap it out for this, there's no extra charge. The other thing that all my kits come with is this little guy right here, and this is a spherical bearing push rod. And what's really nice about this is it fits into the clutch fork. Now, as the clutch fork moves, it's moving in an arc, which means this is going to pivot ever so slightly as it's pushing out. And by having this spherical ball, it fits tight inside the pass-through hole on the clutch fork and it just gives you a nice smooth clutch action. And then you can adjust it with this nut and then you tighten the jam nut up onto this nut so that it is locked into place. Now for years I sold them without jam nuts. The pressure from the pressure plate transferred through the clutch fork was enough to keep this from moving. And that's actually how both of my cars are set up, no jam nut. But I had enough customers say to me, hey, you know, I've had a little bit of movement that I just decided to start adding jam nuts. It didn't really cost a whole lot extra and it's just a little insurance to make sure that everything is locked into place. So the number one question I get from customers or from people wanting to design their own kit is, will my OEM master cylinder work? And I always say to them, what are the specs of the master cylinder? And what I always get from potential customer or those seeking help is the bore. They tell me what the diameter of their master cylinder is. And oftentimes it's 0.58 or 0.75 inches or somewhere in between. And they say, will it work? And every single time I say, I don't know. I need more information because the bore is insufficient. Fluid volume is what moves the slave cylinder. And in order to calculate fluid volume, we also need the stroke. And that will tell us if we have sufficient fluid volume to actuate the clutch. Now, if the master cylinder is, let's say, three quarters of an inch, and the slave cylinder is seven eighths of an inch, how does this end up working out? Well, your master cylinder must have more stroke than the one inch that is required at the slave cylinder for the transmissions that I mentioned. And that more than one inch gives you the extra fluid needed to get one inch here. So the question is, how do we do the math? So the first thing we have to know is the area of a circle. So here's our circle. And to determine the area of the circle, we have pi r squared 
pi being the mathematical constant used when doing math about circles, and r meaning the radius. So r is half the distance from the center of the circle to the outside, and it has to be squared. So in the case of a three-quarter inch master cylinder, we have 0.75 inches. Half of that is going to be, we'll divide that by two, equals 0.375 inches. So that is going to be our radius. Now we take 0.375 inches times 0.375 inches, and that equals 0 0.140 inches. So now we take the 0 0.140 inches times pi, and that equals 0.4 four inches. Now when you do the same calculations for a 7 8 inch bore, the fluid volume for one inch on a 7 8 inch bore slave cylinder is 0.6 inches. So when you look at those two things, that seems insufficient. It seems like the 3 quarter inch bore master is not going to have enough fluid to move the slave cylinder one inch. But when we take 0.44 inches times the stroke, and that's why the stroke is so important, 1.25 inches, we get 0.55 inches of fluid volume. Now again, we're a little bit short of the 0.6, but this is what's so nice about the kits that I offer. 0.55 divided by 0 0.60 equals 0.92 inches. And because I use the inner hole on the clutch fork instead of the hole that the cable was designed to go in, 0 0.90 inches is all that's required to actuate the clutch. So with a three-quarter inch slave cylinder with 1.25 inches of stroke, we have enough stroke to actuate the clutch. Now here's the catch. You must get all the air out of the system. If there is still air in the system, then this number shrinks. That one air bubble may make this 0.75, which is going to be less than this. I have heard from so many customers over the years, I know how to bleed brakes, I'm good at working on my stuff, I'm not getting sufficient stroke, there's got to be something wrong with the kit. The problem is always air. It's always air. Hydraulics are absolute. If you have a 3 quarter inch bore master cylinder with 1.25 inches of stroke, and you're using a 7 8 inch bore slave cylinder, you will always get 0 0.92 inches of stroke if all the air is out. If you're getting less than that, there is still air in the system. And because hydraulic clutch pressures are less than 100 PSI, where brake pressures can be as much as 1,000 PSI, a hydraulic clutch will never feel spongy if there's air in the system. Again, same argument. I know how to bleed things. I know how to get all the air out. This system and other systems like this can be a real bear. I've struggled at times to get all the air out. So the only way to know if all the air is out is to do the math. Now, because of this, I actually started selling 13 16 inch master cylinders. For years, I sold the three quarter. My cars have three quarter inch, but I started selling the 13 16 because it provides a little more fluid volume. And the advantage to that was if I sold it to a customer who did not quite get all the air out, they would still have a working clutch. So that takes us back to the question, will their OEM slave cylinder work? Well, you have no choice but to do the math and calculate fluid volume. So it's pi r squared times stroke equals fluid volume. 
and then you can see if it works with the slave cylinder in question. The fluid volume requirements for my 7 8 slave is 0 0.60 or just a little bit less. Again, my kits require 0.9 inches, so you can get away with a little less. If you use my 3 quarter inch slave cylinder, it's 0.44 inches. And those are the numbers we are trying to reach. I hope this helps. I hope that I haven't confused anybody. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. As I said at the beginning, we're kicking off an entire series on hydraulic clutches, how to use them, how to design them, that sort of thing. So if you have questions, make sure you post it down in the comments section so that I know what kind of information you are looking for. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.